Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Be Is Rebuild. In today's episode, we're working on the Jump-A-Con and uh, we're gonna be continuing work on the rear suspension modules and arms and things like that. And we're also gonna just totally strip down this whole chassis, get all the wiring removed, the dash stuff removed. Anything we don't need on this car that we're not gonna build off of is coming off in this episode. Stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Zenga Poker. Now you guys know I used to be a professional poker player for like four years, so I got a soft spot in my heart for playing poker. I love doing it. And this is an amazing game to play it on. It's available on iOS, Google Play, and web, so you can play it across all of your devices. And it's just a really fun way to jump on and play poker in your free time. Anywhere you go, you can take it with you. And they've got all the good flavors of poker available there. They got sit and go tournament poker, you got traditional buy-in poker, large table, short table, all the good stuff you want to play. And as I'll show you in a second, they got low stakes and they have high stakes and it caters to all the players needs and skill levels in between. So Zenga Poker is a free to play game. And if you guys use my link in the description below, you're going to start with 3 million chips. So I built my bankroll up to like 1.5 billion chips. And then I did what any competent poker player does. I headed straight to the high stakes tables. And after a couple decent hands and high stakes, uh, I got a little lucky at one, built it up to 2.5 billion. I'm going for the highest stakes in the game. I'm only one notch off. I'm going to change the whole Zenga Poker economy. But Anyways, as you can tell, I've been having a lot of fun with it. And they've just started the Zanga Poker Watch series. So you can play hands at the cash tables and it's gonna earn towards an exclusive series of in-game watches. You can see in the high stakes that a lot of these players at the table have these fancy watches. I'm trying to give me one. And once you earn yours, you can show it off at the table as well. And they've got Winter Wonder, which is running December 7th through the 28th. It's a three week long event with great visuals and event challenges that all the players compete in to earn themselves the exclusive Winter Wonder watch. So don't miss out because you're only gonna have a limited time to get the Winter Wonder watch. So it's a really fun game. If you like playing poker, go check it out, guys. The link is in the description. And like I said, if you use my link in the description, you're gonna get three million uh, chips to start out with playing, which is really gonna help you along the way. Thank you so much to Zanga Poker for sponsoring this episode. Let's get down to work. All right, getting started on the teardown. Kyle has already gotten a head start, so let me catch you guys up. So Kyle has pulled out all the wiring. Now this is, I think, a full Lambo wiring harness for a Huracan. How much do you think that weighs, Kyle, like all together? Oh, over 50 pounds. So we did some weight reduction for sure. Over 50 pounds of wiring. We will be replacing all of this wiring with the standalone ECU and a few other wires to run things like the headlights and taillights. So we're gonna do all that wiring ourselves. Uh, the HVAC system also came out of the dash so that is this guy right here and that guy right there they both lived right in there so let me show you inside it looks great there's now so much room for activities and it's so like so much more manageable now that everything is kind of cleared out of here so we got to install a clutch pedal right there um, we need to obviously get a new gas pedal i'm not going to go through everything that we need in the interior because that's ridiculous but uh yeah there's some some holes that we'll be 3d printing um some block off plates for or we may actually weld those shut if that's a if we don't need to run any wires through them but we'll certainly need to run some wires and then we got our floorboards. So this will all get cleaned out before we uh, send it off to paint. Everything in here is all gonna get painted once we're, once we're ready. I'm sure you guys saw this thing come out. This is the dashboard and we are actually gonna use this. It's a great structure and uh, we're gonna build off of this for our dashboard. So uh, the next thing that I'm gonna have Kyle do is we're gonna strip this guy down bare. There's just some small stuff on here that we're not gonna need, like this little Audi tracking unit, whatever. This is probably a GPS module, I'm guessing. It's got an antenna thing, or it could be for the keyless entry. Um, we're gonna strip this thing down, spray it off, clean it up, touch up any of the paint. If any of the paint is missing on here, we'll go ahead and touch that up. Um, although it's probably gonna get painted again later, but we'll go ahead and touch that up now and then reinstall that back in there. And while Kyle's working on that, I'm gonna continue to work away on uh, setting up some of these uh, control arm sections for the driver's rear side. Okay, we 
got two parts banged out. We got the hub and we got this part right here. Um, I do want to point out that I'm trying to do this a little bit differently. If there's a, a piece of weld that, or a piece that needs to be full welded that I'm going to cover with a plate that's going to get tacked on there, rather than needing to cut it back off later, I'm trying to do the full weld and then tack the thing on there. So I'm now that this this side is you know fitting and we learned about it and stuff, I'm a little bit more comfortable with fully welding some of this stuff out. In the end, it all has to get fully welded out. I just don't want to weld everything hardcore up and find out later that we have a mistake because that's a lot of cutting and work to clean that back up. So uh, yeah, but that's good. On to the next one. Got this guy busted out and Kyle's got the dash put back in. Cleaned it up, gave it a little bit of spray paint in the spots just to protect from rust and stuff like that. It looks fantastic. That's gonna be a really, really good point to build off of and for us to work off of, so that's awesome. So we're gonna continue with the theme of kind of tearing this thing down and stuff that we don't need, removing it. Kyle and I are gonna go in on this back end. We're gonna remove these tails, these things, and anything else kind of moving this way forward um, and get into this back area as well. I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll peel this guy off um, and that uh, little padding and get out whatever's underneath there as well. We're leaving brake lines and then this is a vacuum line that runs to the engine so I want to double check this make sure it is what we think it is. Sorry couldn't see it very well. It's right here. Runs down there. Goes all the way front to the brake booster so if uh, that is what I think it is if that's what it is then um, we'll want to keep this so we can run it to our intake manifold. Uh, so we're just going to continue kind of trimming stuff out. Got our rear tips de-winged on both sides. Uh, I did some uh, weather stripping and stuff removal up there. A bunch of little brackets came off. And then Kyle jumped down. We took that padding out to open up the uh, area for our fuel cell. We left the fuel lines in case we want to use them. We're going to try a different fuel strategy on this vehicle since we had problems with our last strategy. Um, and uh, so now it's time to move on. We're trying to remove useless stuff. So this is a lot. There's a lot of delaminated carbon fiber right here that's hiding some damage. I don't think we're going to do any damage repair in today's episode, but I'm going to kind of try and work my way around the vehicle like this. So we're going to go ahead and cut. This piece is on there really, really, really strong. So we're going to cut along that seam right there and try and take as much camera won't focus. There we go. Take as much of that off as we can, bring that out, bring that out, and it'll at least expose the damage so we know what we're working with. And uh, we can laminate it back on later. We managed to pry that panel off and see the uh, it, it kind of exposed this damage down here. We don't know the extent of it, and I will say that every every piece of carbon fiber that you see here that is torn, that is ripped, and stuff like that, that's a problem to the structural integrity of of the vehicle. Uh, every you know the way carbon fiber works is kind of just every piece that's all put together as like a puzzle. Once it's all glued together and it all works together, builds this amazingly strong and rigid chassis that is a Lamborghini Huracan. But when you start losing pieces of that, you really could, if you take like out a key piece, it's like the Jenga puzzle could fall. Um, so what we're doing to kind of counter that is, is we're actually not really relying on any, in, it, throughout this build is we're not really relying on any of this chassis or this body for our safety and for our suspension and our components to keep us on the road. That's all internal caging and external caging that connect into each other. So you gotta look at it as like, we're not really relying on the structural rigidity of this thing anymore. We're building around it and through it and in it. And what we're looking for this thing to do is just look sexy on the outside. So it's kind of a different ball game than building a street car or something else like that. So with that being said, we wanna figure out where this is and how far it is out. I have a feeling with carbon fiber that it got hit hard and then it would have probably 
sprung back close to where it was in the beginning. So there's a rod that goes, or a bar, beam, whatever it looks like this, goes from here to here. And there is one of those sitting right there. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is unbolt that one, flip it around, bring it over here, and we'll use that as a measuring stick to see how far out of whack this uh, kind of rear shoulder is to the frame. Got the arm flipped around, bolts it in over here, goes to here. It's so close. It looks close. It's uh, it's about one bolt hole width off. Whoops, I broke it. Uh, I got a tool that I used to use in auto repair on BRZs a couple years ago when I started this channel. It's good at pushing things off of other things. So I'm, I think we might just, uh, I'm gonna see if I can find it and grab it and try and push on this thing and see what happens if it wants to just kind of flex back into place. <laughs> That's not the tool, Oscar. I mean, this is, we're, we're not trying to sit here and repair this thing right now or, or, or do anything to it, but I'm just, I'm just curious. So let's, let's just play around with it. The giant death javelin pry bar was not the tool I was talking about. It turns out we hadn't used the other tool that I was talking about for so long. It's like a hydraulic bottle ram jack thing. We just threw it away. So anyways, uh, we're really close. We got it in here. You can see it's it's pretty damn close. Um, we need a little bit more adjustment. Got to push it this way like a quarter inch more, but can't get the leverage on it right now. So we'll worry about that later. Let's move on. We're going to go ahead and cut this thing out, get this window trim out, get this whole door trim out, coming all the way down through around there. Got that guy cleaned up, got that guy cleaned up, uh, and that's gone. So next we're gonna, I'm gonna do a little exploratory surgery on this section right here. Really gonna be trying to bring it back to we, where we see this bar stock right here so uh, we can see if it's straight as we go through. So I'm just gonna grab the cutoff wheel and kinda start cutting some of this off and I'm gonna bend this back straight. I wanna hang on to that if we can. I'll bend that back straight as well and probably just be trimming a lot of stuff off here. The game plan for this area is to take more box uh, aluminum and kind of rebuild this structure with thicker um, uh, aluminum metal and uh, and that will help us uh, have a nice flush mounting surface for our doors. We've got some exciting doors coming. You guys are gonna like them. Exploratory surgery went well. So overall, this is still straight. That's the most important thing that I'm worried about is this straight, which means this mounting point and this mounting point are good. Although we're not gonna use the stock Lamborghini door hinges anyways, but having this bar, this is the really thick piece. The rest of this stuff, you can see how thin it is. I mean, it cut through like butter. It's not very strong. Um, this, These two pieces are a little bit stronger, so I couldn't actually bend those out of the way. We're gonna have to weld something onto this and then we'll use a slide hammer, pull it out of the way, get this all flat, and then I'll be able to use my technique that I was hoping to do, which is another piece of flat bar coming through here to help reinforce uh, this piece of the frame. So that is actually, I mean, that goes straight down into the frame and connects all the way up through here. So I'm happy that that piece is still all solid in one piece and everything's good there. Got that little pinch weld straightened up as much as we need to. So that's good. We're gonna be able to mount the door and get it back together securely. We're gonna move on forward. We're gonna remove this shock and uh, we don't need like this whole thing right here. We don't need that. We don't need this whole thing. All we're gonna leave in this area, basically we're gonna take all the junk out, all the junk brackets. We're gonna leave this bracket and this bracket because I think they're gonna help us mount our hood because we uh, do have in the designs plan for something similar to an OEM hood. So figure leaving a couple mounting points around ain't a bad thing so we'll remove a bunch of this unused stuff
this side is looking nice and empty. We left mounting tab here, 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 and this, we'll, we'll cut that guy off in a second. Other than that, everything else, we got all nice and cleaned up and removed. Everything's already been uh, removed through here. We got some coolant lines right here. They run underneath. That's another one of those things that we gotta wait till we can get under the car safely to uh, remove. But other than that, we're gonna leave all the brake lines. We're gonna try and build off of the OEM braking system. We're gonna use a bias distribution block right here and uh, work off of the existing brake lines and then do some extensions and stuff. If we can, if not, we'll just run our own brake lines. So we're gonna go ahead and move over here. This will be a quick side. Do the same type of thing in this front corner. I made quick work of that uh, passenger side front fender area. So we're gonna finalize our trip around the Huracan uh, with some of this stuff. So we're gonna cut a tab off of here, here, and here that we're not gonna be using. And then we'll go ahead and remove this little railing as well. Drill out some of these uh, spot clips. They're there and there's a little guy hanging out there. We'll drill those out. While he's working on that, I'm gonna continue working on our suspension components. I got this guy busted out and got the little uh, uniball on the back of that. So I'm gonna jump into a new piece and get another one going. Kyle got the side railing all trimmed up and our top railing all cleaned up as well. I was over here on the bench building another Terminator arm. It's nice and tack welded together. So today we got this guy done, that wheel hub, that guy, and that guy done. So that just leaves um, this mess of a tough piece, which is actually this piece right here. And then this piece that needs to be modified. And then we'll have that whole other side done. And I wanted to show you guys this thing. This is, uh, we were test fitting uh, for wheels. We were actually doing some test fit stuff to figure out what size and offset wheel we can run. And uh, this is our, so this is our rotor that's over our, our wheel bearing assembly down here that bolts into our hub. So the, the wheel bearing kind of just bolts in right there and then the rotor slots right over that. So once we add a brake caliper, that thing's ready for a wheel to go on it and ready to rock. And it's, it's so wide. <laughs> so the center of the wheel is gonna be basically over that. And that is like, yeah, it's gonna be a <laughs> ridiculously wide vehicle. Uh, it will be harder to roll, uh, I think. This is almost like a square. <laughs> We're gonna be driving around, we're gonna be racing in a square. All right guys, that's a wrap on this episode and this is a reminder not to weld without a face shield. This is just my face falling off from the last time I accidentally did it. Don't do that, it's stupid. Again, thanks to Zanga Poker for sponsoring this episode. Make sure you go check them out below. And if you guys wanna check out any of our merch, head over to bsforbuild.com. We got some great shirts, hoodies, hats, all that good stuff in time for Christmas. Make sure you go check it out. Thank you guys so much for the support. We'll see you next time. Peace. Come on.